Hi, everybody, and welcome to five fantastic features for Google Meet for 2021. As you go into the new school year, you're going to run into the possibility that you may still need Google Meet for some virtual meetings with guest presenters, but you also may still need it to meet with students, depending on your situation, whether it's full virtual, blended, or face-to-face. -face. So let's talk about some features that have changed and some features that are still there that are just fantastic for use. I'm gonna start from my Google Classroom and I'm gonna use my Google Meet link at the top of my classroom to start this meeting. And the first feature that we're gonna talk about is new backgrounds. So once you're in your meeting, you'll notice that first of all, if you haven't been in Google Meet in a while, the interface is a little bit different than it used to be, but it doesn't take that long to get used to it. If you look at the bottom toolbar, there is a series of icons that are all those tools that you're still familiar with. But if you click on the dots, you'll notice that you have that friendly menu where you can change your background. If you click on change background, you have the opportunity to blur your background. There's two different gradients of blur, as well as some of the old backgrounds that were available before. But now we have a couple of live backgrounds that you can use with some animated things going on in the background. My favorite is this one with the animated students in the background. So that one's kind of fun to use. So if you need to change up your background, like for instance, mine, it's just kind of boring right now. Um, I need something a little bit more engaging. You can use these backgrounds and apply them during your meeting. The second thing is if you are going to do a virtual meeting, you can invite people to be in the meeting either in person or virtually. Now I've done this many times in the past year where because people are just ready to get back to face-to-face -face meetings, but some are still wanting to engage virtually, um, I have blended meetings. So let's say for instance, I'm gonna have a meeting and we'll make that meeting for today, okay? Uh, we'll call it a classroom meeting. And I'm gonna add some guests. I'm gonna add John Doe here. And we've got John in here and I'm going to open up my more options. And first of all, I've got a Google meet in here, but I'm going to add a room to my location because we are going to meet in our conference room. So now that I've added that conference room, we have an option to either join us in person or via Google meet. Once I save this, it'll ask me if I'd like to send and invite. Now, if I switch over to John's calendar, we can see that he's got a meeting waiting for him. And if he clicks on that meeting invite, at the bottom, there's a yes and no and a maybe that you may be already familiar with. But if you notice that there's a Google Meet that you can use or an in-person option, if you click on the yes, next to that, there's a drop down arrow and we have some options. Yes, in a meeting room or yes, joining virtually. So if you wanna let your meeting organizer know whether or not you're going to be there in person or joining virtually, just choose your option and then they will be notified in their meeting. So if I go back and look in here and look at my guests, I can see when I hover over John, he's joining virtually. So that's the second option. The number three fantastic feature that we're gonna look at is just, it's a simple one and it's it's been there for a little while now, but it is raising your hand. Now, they've updated this feature and they made it a little bit more robust for Google Meet. And when you click on the raise hand, it gives you a visual hand up, okay? And if you need to keep your hand raised, um, you can keep it raised, but it gives an audible sound to the presenter so that they know that you've raised your hand. And if you're in a meeting that has multiple people and you can see everybody in the grid, the hand will pop up next to the person's profile in the grid. So. That's number three. And then this one is my favorite and it's been one that teachers have been asking for for quite some time. Number four is being able to see what you're presenting. So the, the catch with Google Meet in the past was that when you present something, if you wanna present your screen, you can't see what you're presenting to the rest of the group as well as your group. Now you can. So if I go to the present now icon, which is down here on our handy toolbar, and I click a tab, I'm gonna to choose to show my YouTube tab. When I click share, it jumps over to that tab so I can see what's on the tab. 
But if I go back to my meeting, I can now see what I'm presenting to the group as well as anybody in the group. So everything is there so that you can see what they see. You can put your screen where you need it to be for the tab that you're presenting. And if you need to go back and move your mouse around on the screen or change the orientation, just switch to that tab, scroll down to where you need to be or make any changes you need to make and then go back to your meeting. So very simple feature. And then number five, this one's a little bit of a veteran feature, but it's a great one if you do virtual learning or blended learning with your students. And that is to add a Jamboard to your meeting. So on the three dots on your toolbar at the bottom of the screen, you notice when you do your pop-up menu, there is a whiteboard option. And this allows you to start a new whiteboard. If you already have a Jamboard from your drive that you wanna use, you can do that. But if you don't, click start a new whiteboard. It will create that whiteboard and open it. So if you have other people in your meeting, they can engage in what's going on in the whiteboard. You can draw and write on the whiteboard. You just use your tools over here at the left and begin your, in this case, a simple math lesson. Um, and the people engaging in your meeting can also share. If you find that they can't engage in the Jamboard, then go up to the share button, change it so that anyone with the link can use it and hit done. Make sure those features are set so that anyone with the link can edit if you want them to actually write on your Jamboard. So easy permissions to set up and a great feature to have when you're working with kids in a Google Meet. Well, hopefully these five features are something that'll help you get started back up for the new school year. If you have questions at any time, go to my blog at www.techiecoach.com. Thanks for joining me.